Okay, so today this is playful already because I'm actually doing this in the rain. It's just started to rain on me and I'm just going to go for it. But today, to deepen your connection with your food and just play and challenge yourself a little bit more, um, we are going to do this game that you've heard people do with travel before where you pull out a map, pull out a map, put it on the wall, pull it up on your computer, you know, but you're going to like spin yourself around and then just close your eyes and randomly point somewhere on a map or you're going to just like take your hand and place it somewhere with your eyes closed on the screen or on the paper or, you know, however you're going to do this. But it's that random game, like I said, that people use for travel where it's just like just randomly, you know, roll a piece of dice or um, make a mark on a on the map somewhere and then look, you know, when your eyes are not closed or, you know, toss a um, little balled up piece of paper in the air and wherever it lands on the map, um, that'll be the thing. That'll be the place, you know, uh, but you're doing that whatever method you want um, to find that location, but it's a random, you know, Whatever happens, happens. Um, selection on a map. Eyes closed. You don't get to choose mentally at all. And then once you get it, then look up like it's a school project, but it's not. It's a fun project. Um, so these are the school projects that you loved, right? Didn't you like always love the school project where somebody was going to like bring in food? <laughs> um, but yeah, look up this place, this place on the map um, and see what foods are like there okay and you know don't go basic like all right i picked somewhere in china i know what chinese food is we're having chinese food tonight let's go uh no man i'm saying like challenge yourself we're trying to discover new stuff this is like an exploration exercise we're trying to discover new stuff and so you're trying to discover something you don't already know. If you landed on China, try to discover something about Chinese food or foods that they eat in China that you didn't already know before. And you're probably going to do best to look for traditional foods like, you know, really ancient, traditional or when they were hunter gatherers. Um, what did they eat or what was their primary source of calories? I mean, now it would maybe be like rice or something. Um, but was that how it always was? Um, what kind of things have been used for the greatest source of sustenance? Or maybe it's like their favorite flavor um, or some unique dish that was like the most prized kind of dish to have at a celebration. Um, but something that held some unique importance um, in a historical sense especially since it's food that we're talking about here. And food is something that has kept us alive and served us as a species, you know, so it's important in that way, you know, the going back and the what was a traditional food? What did they eat when they were hunter gatherers? What kept them going and alive? What was their main source of nutrition way back? Um, because that's when you really start to get into stuff that, um, might be new to you because it's not how things are now and but it's still so important and so true to that area because that's the whole map exercise is like somewhere that's not here and you know you might accidentally put your finger on um, or haphazardly whatever put your finger on a place that is nearby to here and so then you gotta get to learn a little bit more about your own area um, but the more you know um, expansive you get with this game or you might you might feel like I already know a lot about my area or I'm really excited about this game only in the exoticness of the other areas fine then like put yourself a map that's folded so that this hemisphere is not even in it um, and so you're obviously looking at some other location. Um, go about it however you want, but I think that even if you did end up putting your hand on a place that was right in your hometown, you could still find things about what was traditionally eaten and used for sustenance, what is food, and that deep relationship and connection to food that like has kept us going and has kept us thriving and that has made it so that we settled here and, you know, the land, um, and us were in relationship, um, you know, with this food or with this animal or, uh, you know, what was it that was eaten? And especially new stuff, especially new stuff. I mean, if it's like, oh, yeah, well, they largely ate, 
you know, two things that you're just super familiar with, you know, this type of meat and this type of nut, and you're just super familiar with those things, you know, dig deeper or redo, you know, find another place on the map, but you're trying to find new things, new things that are basic. Um, because it's not like some crazy Chinese dish or some crazy African, uh, thing that they do with their food and this combo. And, um, it can be, but I'm thinking that there's real interest and connection in just finding a basic thing like, okay, um, a peely nut, you know, that's like a nut that is used, um, as a major basic, almost, you know, food group or something. I mean, not really, but you know, it's such a staple in these other people's diet and we've never heard of it. Um, another one was a tiger nut. Um, I think that one is kind of more starchy and it is used, um, heavily in like an African culture, um, like as a base, you know, the way that we use like wheat, um, you know, it's like makes the bread and makes the everything. And, um, I had never heard of it. I was like, really? Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Um, it was actually available on a shelf and we made things with tiger nut flour. Um, and of course now people are like, oh, it's a superfood and uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, don't get me started on what I think about the superfoods, but um, I mean, it's worth trying. It's totally worth trying. And maybe it does have extra nutrients um, because it's in its unadulterated form. We haven't been messing with it forever. It's just a freaking tree that nobody's been messing with or a plant or a tuber or whatever that nobody's been, you know, altering and getting commercialization going around. Um, so, okay. Uh, my only reason for not liking the word superfoods is because then it does get commercialization around it. Um, all foods are kind of superfoods if you leave them alone, if they're actually just like coming from the earth. And you know, so that's my side rant about that. We're trying the spin around, get yourself somewhere random picked on a map and then find some really basic, uh, traditional source of food that comes from that land and that has played an important role in that culture, um, in human life from that area and learn about it and try it. You know, that's what we're doing. See how you like it.